Good morning, friends, and welcome to our e-service. As we gather as brothers and sisters in Christ from the spaces and places we find ourselves at this moment in time, welcome. For those who are joining, have been joining us regularly and are members of our communities of faith at Nuetevo, Krugersdorp, and at Princess, as well as from the Mahale Circuit of the Methodist Church of South Africa, welcome home, friends, as we gather as brothers and sisters in Christ. Friends, if you are new, it's the first time you're joining us today, welcome. My name is Raymond. I'm a Methodist minister serving in the Mahali Circuit of the Methodist Church of Southern Africa. And I want to encourage you to participate in our service this morning as you feel comfortable. Welcome. I'm glad that you've chosen to be with us in this space of worship this morning. So friends, as a worshipping community, we, we gather as we have over the many weeks of our national lockdown and through this online platform. And we've lit a candle together as a reminder of the light of Christ that shines in the moments of our darkness. I want to encourage you to grab a candle and something to light it with. That as we light our candles together, we, we remember that where we are is a sanctuary. That the presence of Christ and the light of Christ are in those moments and places with us. You've lit your candle. As we do it in unity with one another, there's a moment in which we know that the light of Christ shines into the darkness of our world. The world and the darkness have not understood it, but the light has never been overcome by any opposition. And we know that in that moment in time, Christ's light is shining with us and in the spaces in which we find ourselves. With that in mind, we come to a moment of prayer. Almighty God, as we come to you in prayer this morning, we give you thanks and praise for your grace, your love, for most of your, your presence and your light that shine into every moment and situation with us. So as we gather this morning through this e-service, we combine ourselves with the lighting of a candle in the presence and light of Christ with those who are worshipping and in service, both at our church sites, as well as our brothers and sisters around the world who are lighting candles and remembering and worshipping you in this moment in time. That your presence is with us all, Almighty God, is a, is a wonderful and marvellous thing, and we thank you for that. But with the knowledge as well that you are with us brings often a, a fear and a concern. The fear of the sin that is in our lives and the concern of, of how do, what do we do with this, this sin. And friends, I want to give you a moment in the quiet of this prayer to ask for forgiveness, to, to confess your sins to God in this moment of prayer. So lift up your prayers of confession to God now. So, Father, as we lift up these, our prayers of confession to you. We thank you that you hear them, Almighty God, and that you have made a way for us to come back into relationship with you. That you have paid the price for these, our sins, upon the cross of Calvary, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour, and the price that was paid for our salvation and for all people's salvation. So, Father, we thank you that we hear the words of grace. Your sins are forgiven. Go and sin no more. But Father, we also ask that you would strengthen us by your Holy Spirit's guiding and directing. That Almighty God, that you would help us in the areas of our lives where we fall into sin, where we perpetually sin out of habit, out of weakness, and other areas in our lives. Help us, transform us, and heal us in those areas, we pray. That Father, the image of Christ may be healed to a greater extent within inside of each and every one of us. For we ask this in your name, Jesus. Holy Spirit, guide us in this time as we worship you together. Strengthen us as we come now. For we ask this in your precious name, Jesus, now and always. Amen. So friends, as the forgiven children of God, we come to a moment and we, we share the peace of the Lord with each other. Friends, the peace of the Lord be with you. And I hear you saying, and also with you, Raymond. 
Let's just pass the peace of the Lord to each other, whether it's on our WhatsApp info groups or, or on the description of this video or commenting on our YouTube or Facebook platforms as you watch this video. The peace of the Lord be with you. So friends, as we gather as a community of faith, we bind ourselves together as brothers and sisters in Christ by sharing our faith as we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Now I'm going to be praying in English and I want to invite you in whichever language is the most comfortable on your tongue to pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Friends, our notices today are found within the video description of this video. And I'd like to encourage you to take a moment to to read through our notices so that you're aware of what's taking place in our community of faith at this time. The only one to highlight again is our reopening of our in-person worship services. As of the 4th of October, we have resumed our in-person worship services at our church sites. We have our 745 service at Krugersdorf Methodist Church, as well as our 11 o'clock service at our Krugersdorf Methodist Church site. We have our 930 service at our Newark Hevel Methodist Church site and our 930 service at our Princess Methodist Church site as well. We are also in the process of resuming our children's and Sunday school ministries at this time as well, with them opening at staggered stages. I know that our Krugersdorp Methodist Church 745 children's ministry Sunday school is resumed, as well as from this week, our 930 Princess Methodist Church service Sunday school has commenced as well. I look forward to seeing you in person at our sites. Just a reminder to please use the details and book your seat. Obviously, we're still under the government legislation of no more than 50% capacity at our church sites. And obviously, we have varying numbers that that means in our church building uh, sites, obviously based on capacity. Friends, I'd like to encourage you that if you aren't yet ready to return to in-person worship, which I fully understand it is a normal response to the space we find ourselves in this moment in time, please do join us for our online e-services. We have our 8 a.m. sermon e-service, our 8.30 children's e-service, and our 9 a.m. worship e-service. Please join us for those or both services as we worship together, both online and in person, as a, as a community of faith in the spaces and places where we find ourselves and gather as we worship God together. I'd like to take an opportunity in this moment just to thank those who continue to give so generously into the life of our church at this time. Thank you. As you give to God, we receive your tithes and offerings, and we use them for the furtherment of the kingdom of God through the sustaining work of our church sites, as well as our online platforms, in order to take the gospel of Jesus Christ to those who need it most at this time, for the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for the healing of the nations. With that in mind, we come to a moment of prayer to lift up the business of this, our church, and our giving to God. Let us pray. So, Father, out of love for you, we, we continue to seek to be the body of Christ, worship you in community with one another, both in person and online, as we, we are able at this moment in time. We just lift up the church, and we know that it's your church, Father. We ask your guiding and directing as we seek to be your church in community at this abnormal time. Strengthen us as we seek to meet with one another in various places, whether electronically, online, or in person. Guide us in what that looks like, that we may create safe places for our worship together. Father, we also ask that you receive our giving. As we give out of love for you, Father, of our tithes, of our offerings, of our time, and of our treasures. And as we give to you, though, you receive it out of love for you, Almighty God, from grateful hearts. Receive it and use it for the furtherment of your kingdom giving those who have ministered wisdom, guiding and directing as they seek to use it for the furtherment of your kingdom. So, Father, we, we just thank you and we just ask more of you now. Guide us and direct us to be your church, your body, as we seek to reach out in love and grace, humility and gentleness to the world around us. Now and always, in your precious name, Jesus. 
Amen. Friends, as we come to the Word of God this morning, I want to encourage you, if you have a Bible nearby, to grab your Bible and follow with us through our reading, or follow with the words on the screen. Our reading this morning is from Matthew 22, verses 34 to 40. I want to invite you to follow with me on the screen. I'm going to put the words up. Here they are. Matthew 22, verses 34 to 40. And I'm reading from the New International Version. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Friends, these are the words of Christ for the people of Christ. Thanks be to Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Let us pray. Almighty God, as we, we come to your holy scriptures this morning, we ask that you'd speak to us through the words of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. That Holy Spirit, you would empower them to our hearing and that you'd know and guide us in what we need to hear from this sermon this morning. Open our hearts, our minds to what it is you want to say to us. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each and every one of our hearts be pleasing to you, our Rock and our Redeemer, Jesus Christ our Lord, now and always. Amen. Friends, the only way to truly get to know somebody is by spending time with them. I mean, through Facebook and other social media platforms and information portals, we, we can read about somebody. We can even hear about somebody. But that doesn't mean that you know that person, but rather that you know about that person. Friends, in order to truly get to know somebody, you need to spend time with them by making time to get to know that person. Because a relationship is developed through spending time with the other person, getting to know them and to grow in an understanding of and, and with them and to build trust with them. I mean, a, a perfect example of this is a boyfriend and girlfriend. You can know about each other. I mean, friends can tell you about, did you hear about Raymond or did you hear about Robin or, or whatever your boyfriend or girlfriend is. You, you know about that person. But you're not in a relationship with them until you make time to be with them, to have a conversation with them, to work on the relationship by making time for and with each other. But when it comes to relationship building, we need to ask, what are our motives for, for spending time with the, with the other person? Is it transactional or is it relational? In other words, is it transactional? Are we trying to get something out of that person? Or is it relational? Are we trying to build a relationship with that person out of love for that person, not for what we can get from that person? Because when it comes to God, we may know much about God by what people have told us and, and what we've read in the Bible and, and perhaps have been told through our Sunday school lessons or sermons. Perhaps we, we may know a lot about God, and, and that's okay. But God wants more than you to know about God. God wants you to be in a relationship with God. Now, this is done through, through spending time with God, getting to know God, worshipping God. Because a wor worship is a, is a relational space where we meet with God. Worship is a, is a place where we can enter into relationship and deepen our relationship with God through the dedication of our, of our hearts, minds, and, and souls. And all that we are with our strength being directed towards God. Now, many church traditions have, have different ideas about how we connect with God. Because today, as we, we worship together in the space in which we find ourselves, as we worship God in the, the various church denominations in which we find ourselves, we celebrate the 503rd year of Reformation. We remember that in, on the 31st of October, 1517, a German Augustinian monk by the name of Martin Luther began what is known as the Protestant Reformation. 
when he nailed his 95 theses to the, the door of the church at Wittenberg, where these were his, his 95 complaints that he had against the established church of that day. Friends, the Protestant Reformation of the 16th century changed Christianity forever. They were provoked to action by the corruption and abuse they saw within the Roman Catholic Church of that time. There were visionary pastors and leaders like, like Martin Luther and John Calvin who spearheaded a movement that transformed Christianity and eventually led to the emergence of the Protestant denominations that exist today, including the Methodist Church. The Reformers were, were guided by the conviction that the church of their day had drifted away from the essential and original teachings of Christianity, especially regarding what it is we, we teach about salvation, how people can be forgiven of their sin through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and receive eternal life through a relationship with God. The Reformation, friends, sought to reorientate the church back to the original message of Jesus and the early church. As a result of the Protestant Reformation, we have what's known as the five solas, which are five Latin phrases or slogans that emerged during the Reformation to summarize what the, the, the Reformist theological convictions are about the essentials that we believe in Christianity. Now the five solas are solo scriptura, in other words, by scripture alone. The Bible alone is our highest authority in all matters. The second is soleo fideo, which is by faith alone. We are saved through faith alone in Jesus Christ. Soleo gratea, which is by grace alone. We are saved by the grace of God alone. The fourth being solas Christus, Christ alone alone. Jesus Christ alone is our Lord, Saviour and King. And the last of the solos, Soleo Doia Gloria, Sole Deo Gloria, to the glory of God alone. Friends, we, we live in all that we do for the glory of God alone. So the five solos, Soleo Scriptura, Scripture alone, Sole Fide, Faith alone, Solea gratia, grace alone. Solas Christus, Christ alone. Sole Deo gloria, to the glory of God alone. Friends, as those in the Protestant tradition, as we, we examine the solas, as we, as we remember this Reformation Sunday as we worship together, the question that it brings to my mind is, is what are we as the, the Protestant church of today protesting against? And I believe Jesus helps us here as we find the greatest commandment in our reading today. In our reading from, from Matthew 22, which needs to be read in the context of worship. You see, Jesus had entered Jerusalem through the triumphal entry, with the, the palm branches being waved and, and coats being put on the floor in front of him. Almost a, a deep worshipful moment. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna being sung and chanted as Jesus comes riding in to Jerusalem on a donkey. Now this had made the Jewish religious very upset. You can imagine the, the Pharisees and Sadducees and all the Jewish religious leaders fuming at seeing Jesus worshipped. In this way. Our reading takes place the very next day. Jesus is walking in the temple courts in the churchyard of that day. And the religious leaders come up to Jesus and begin asking questions, trying to trap Jesus and have him arrested. Our reading begins with, with Jesus saying, But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees with his reply, they met together to question him again. One of them, an expert in religious law, tried to trap him with this question. Teacher, which is the most commandment, sorry, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? Now friends, this is a, this is a tricky and divisive question. But Jesus tackles it head on and he replies in verse 37 of our reading, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest 
of all the commandments. Friends, what is Jesus saying here? Firstly, in response to God, because God loves us, we need to worship God with all of, of who we are. Because worship is the way I react, how I respond to God when, when God loves me. Jesus gives us the how when he says that we need to worship God by, by loving God with all of our hearts, with all of our souls, and with all of our minds. I want to say it again. By loving God with all of our hearts, all of our souls, and all of our minds. But what does it mean for us to love God with all our hearts? Friends, we, we need to love God with, with all of our hearts. We do this through, through making God the focus of our attention and our affection. Be it through singing to God with, with all of our hearts, with all of our passion directed to God. Through living out what we believe when we focus our attention on God and living out our relationship with God. Now friends, it, it goes beyond simply singing and mouthing the words and, and going through the motions. It goes deeper to our intentions in relationship with God. Through using our passion, and giving out of love towards God in order to build in relationship with God, not simply to get something from God. Friends, what does it mean for us to love God with all of our souls? With all of our, our souls, this, I, I believe that this is done through prayer. When we focus our attention on God as we come in a moment of prayer, something of our soul meets with God as, as we bring our soul to God through prayer. As we respond in love to God. We grow deeper through that moment of prayer as we talk with God. Through lifting up our souls in prayer and conversation with God. We grow deeper in relationship with God. Out of love for God. What does it mean for us to love God with all of our minds? Friends, I believe that this is done through, through reading and meditating on God's word. When we focus our attention on God, something in our mind meets with God. God speaks to us through God's word to us. And we grow deeper in relationship with God through using our intelligence, our minds, to meet with God in a space of worship. To, to love God with, our, with all of our minds. So friends, we need to grow in relationship with God. And this happens when we, we come humbly before God with all of who we are, heart, soul, and mind. Through coming to God with, with all of who we are, we, we grow an ever-deepening relationship with God as we seek to, to love God in return for the love that God has given us. So friends, as we gather on this Reformation Sunday, perhaps you, we should be protesting the things in our lives and in life in general that seek to distract and hinder how we and others grow in relationship with God. Now, there are many things in our lives that, that distract us and detract us and our attention from God. Perhaps we need to start protesting those things. You know what those things are? Perhaps there are a couple you can, that come to mind as I'm speaking right now. But Jesus goes on in our reading and in, and in his response to the religious leaders of that day in verse 39. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. Friends, Jesus is here saying that, that we also need to love others by the same standards that we love ourselves. That we need to be aware of others around us and treat them as we would like to be treated. John Wesley, the, one of the founders of the Methodist movement, tells us there is no holiness but social holiness. In other words, we, we need to grow in relationship with our brothers and sisters in Christ, both within the Methodist church and with others in different church denominations and traditions to us. In other words, Jesus asks us to, to find the bridges of divide and to bring begin building bridges of love with our neighbors. Now one such bridge is, the, is what's called the Joint Declaration of the Doctrine of Justification by Faith. Now that's, that's quite a mouthful. 
but it's a theological document that was entered into between the Catholics and the Lutheran Church. Now, 503 years ago, as Martin Luther nailed his 95 Theses to the, the door of the church in Wittenberg, there was a, was a schism in the church, there was a divide in the church. That led to the development of, of the Catholic Church and, and the Protestant Church. Martin Luther went on to, to head up what's known as the Lutheran Church. And there was sworn enemies in, inside the church. Can we call them sworn enemies between the Catholics and the Lutherans? For about 500 years. Through this document, the Joint Declaration of the Doctrine of Justification by Faith, a common understanding of our, our justification by God's grace through faith in Christ was reached. Now, the, the two parties involved, the Catholics and the Lutherans, are, were essentially seeking to resolve that, that 500-year-old conflict over the nature of justification. In other words, how we, we receive our salvation, how we receive our pardon and, and come into relationship with God. Because this was at the root of the Protestant Reformation. The Catholic Church and the Lutheran Church signed this document in 1999. And in 2006, the World Methodist Council became a co-signatory. Can we call it the bridge-building partners in order to bridge the divide that emerged, had emerged within the church? So perhaps we should be protesting the things that seek to damage our relationships between people, both within the church and within our community. So friends, as we seek to be a, a church united, I believe that reforming the church happens through humility and through gentleness. As we seek to protest the things in our lives and in the lives around us, in our communities. As we seek to, to protest the things that bring division between people within the church and, and in the communities around us. Paul helps un, us understand what this humility and gentleness looks like in Ephesians 4 verses 1 to 6, as he says to us, As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you've received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Friends, in humility, we need to acknowledge that we don't have everything figured out. No denomination, no church has everything figured out. We must not let differing views divide us. Rather, we need to love each other by listening and learning from each other through dealing gently and humbly with each other in love for each other. John Wesley, in his sermon entitled The Catholic Spirit, makes the following appeal. But, always, but although a difference of opinion or modes of worship may prevent an entire external union, yet need it prevent our union in affection. Though we cannot think alike, may we not love alike? May we not be of one heart, though we are not of one opinion. Friends, as I close, I believe that, that reformation of church and society can happen in the hearts of people who are humble in spirit. Who are humble enough to realize that they don't have everything figured out. And who are willing to love enough and be gentle and loving enough to listen to people who they disagree with. I'd like to invite you this week to reflect on, on what it is that we as Protestants should be protesting. In other words, what are the things that, that in our modern society, in our lives, we should be protesting against? I've given you two examples in the sermon already. Those that, that seek to take our attention away from God, both in our lives and in the world around us. Maybe we should be protesting those things. We should also be protesting the things that bring division between people, both within the church and the community that surround us. Because I believe that there's much that we need to be protesting about in the world that surrounds us at this time. But doing it in humility 
and in gentleness in order to build love and continue to foster love towards one another in that space. And once you figure that out, I want to invite you to lift that up to God in prayer. Have a, have a moment in which you, you have a conversation with God about it and ask God how you can live reformation in these areas of your life. How you can live that out into the community in which you find yourselves at this moment and time. Let us pray. Mighty and ever-loving God, as we come to you this morning, we thank you that you bring us a word of challenge. We know, Father, the, the past and the history of our church. And we thank you that you have journeyed to bring reconciliation and reformation through your church into both the church itself and the community and the world that surrounds it. And we pray, Father, that you would guide us in seeking to protest the things in our lives and in our world that, Father, detract people from you in a relationship with you, loving you with, with all of who they are, heart, mind, and soul. That seeks to bring division where we need to love our neighbors. So, Father, we ask that, that you'd help us to live out the command that Jesus gave us, to love you with, with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, and to love our neighbors as we would love ourselves. So, Father, guide us, we pray, as only you can, to hear and understand what it is you're saying to us through this sermon this morning and how to live this out in our lives. Guide us now, we ask this in your precious name, Jesus, now and always. Amen. So friends, as we come to the end of our time together this morning, just a reminder that, that as we go through this week, allow a space of worship as you respond to God in love for all that God has done for you, with all of your heart, with all of your mind, with all of your soul, all, all of who you are. And as you love your neighbor as yourself, may it be an act of worship through the way we live out our lives this coming week and beyond. For it's just a reminder that Christ is with you, that God is with you, strengthening you, empowering you in all of this. And know that God is with you in these times as well. The light of Christ shining into the darkness of our world, in us and through us, into the world in which we find ourselves. With that, we, we come and we say together what's known as the benediction as we bless each other as we go our ways as a community that goes back into the world to take the light of Christ to those that we meet. So let us bless each other with these words. And I invite you to say it with me. May the, Christ, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. Amen. Friends, be blessed, stay safe, and know that God is always with you now and always. Amen.